Hi, everyone. Guys, we'll be here, be with you in a moment. Um, Amelia, do you know if uh, Antonia is joining us? I should have said something. She will not. She's in the middle of a mediation, so I am trying my best to live up to the Antonia level today. You are Roy Mac, is that correct? Correct. Good, okay. Um, so now, Candela, can you see us live? Let me, I just keep refreshing it, so let me see if I can yet. There we are, it is us, yes, is the answer. All right, we've got a few more people coming in, so um, give us a moment. All right. Trying to decide, do we have everybody in from the um, waiting room, Dion? We do. And then just let me know if you want me to monitor the chat for questions or if you'll take questions, I guess you can kind of decide. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and have you monitor the chat. Okay. Um, we got a lot to get through. I did prep a, an agenda for today's call. And um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, Dion said this in our staff meeting, and I just want to reiterate for everyone that we can answer the what, but we cannot answer the why Mom, or the can you what. My door? So I just want you guys to know that um, we're going to do our best to answer all of your questions. And uh, we don't have anybody from the state on, but we do have folks from the training program here. And I just, you know, so I don't know why, we don't know why necessarily for a lot of these questions. Um, and we don't know what happens if, but we're gonna go through everything we possibly can and show you where to look on our website for a lot of this information. So I wanna get started. Um, we have Jason Espinosa here, who is the executive director of um, the New Mexico Society for Association Executives. Um, I'm on his board for that. They are the ones who put together the NM Safe Certified Training. And um, they're, while I won't say they're experiencing technical difficulties, I will say that, you know, um, this is getting 3,000 restaurants through this training program has put a burden on, on his capabilities as well. So, um, I just want you to take it easy on him. <laughs> and uh, Jason, I wanted him to go through something that he yeah, sent he us said. a couple of days ago. And um, so here's here's Jason Espinosa. Jason, welcome. Awesome, thank you for having me here today, Carol. Uh, and just to reiterate, uh, so Jason Espinosa with the New Mexico Society of Association Execs. Um, and just a, just a quick reminder on the New Mexico Safe Certified Training, uh, similar to what Carol was saying, we don't come up with the regulations. We don't come up with the standards. Uh, we purely uh, take the the 90 page uh, altogether New Mexico document uh, and turn it into bite sized consumable uh, video trainings uh, that can allow you to train your management staff uh, more accessible than reading through a 90 page document. Um, so, so just getting it out there, we 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 don't set the the requirements. Um, Basically, yeah, our staff has been working really hard and getting everyone through. Um, the last I looked about 20 minutes ago, uh, we were down to 20 restaurants that were pending in their application process. Uh, that'll probably down to zero uh, now. Um, so they've managed to get through, I think, over 3,500 applications uh, since last Tuesday in terms of um, uh, applying, uh, of getting through the registration and um, assigning them course. If you have not received your email with your login credentials, um, please check your spam folder. Um, if your login credentials are not in your spam folder, uh, please email us. Um, I think Carol uh, and is has up right now a screen uh, with some of the FAQs that we sent earlier. So if you previously registered but have not received your login credentials, check your spam folder number one. If you still don't see it, please email us at nmsafecertified at gmail.com. 
uh, stating you haven't received your login credentials. Uh, and then please include your name, your job title, your business, and the email you registered with, because uh, we are getting people emailing us with different emails. Makes it much easier if you let us know what email you registered with us. As soon as we receive that, we will respond with an email resetting your account and resetting your password um, uh, quickly. We have a team constantly looking at that email. So if you haven't received it, uh, please please check the spam and email us. Uh, that's just one thing to know. I mean, if you haven't heard from us, shoot us an email at that nmsafecertified at gmail.com. Additionally, um, as this is designed as a train the trainer program, uh, really make sure that the owner or general manager or whoever the appropriate uh, manager at the site uh, needs to take the course in order to certify the business. And again, this is a certification for the business, not for the individual. Um, so, you know, down the road and after this week, uh, if folks want to add additional staff, we'd love to do that. But what we're doing is sort of putting busters and servers on hold until this week and we can get every business certified. So really make sure your GM, your owner, whoever that person on site is, gets the training done. And then last, when you're doing the trainings, make sure that you complete all three training modules. So make sure that you do the all employer module, make sure you do the restaurant module and make sure you do the retail module. I know we get a lot of emails saying, why do I have to do retail? Per the, the altogether document, restaurants have to comply with the restaurant CSPs, the retail CSPs, and the all employer CSPs. So that's why um, folks are required to complete all three uh, training modules there. So make sure uh, that you complete the, those all three modules. And again, you know, last just, oh, online directory submissions. So those are self submissions. Uh, once you complete the training program, we will send you an email um, with your certificate, with a printable certificate and a link to our business toolkit. Within the business toolkit is the link to add yourself to the business directory. So make sure that you check that. We will send you a business toolkit with a certificate and a link to add yourself to the directory. If you have finished all your training modules, the easiest thing and what makes the workflow better for us to get everyone through is if you can send an email to verify nmsafecertified at gmail.com. Uh, we have one temp team member that's, that's their job is they receive emails through that account, they uh, verify completion, and then they add them to a list uh, for another staff member who's just focusing on certificates. So if you email us at that email to let us know, that'll really help uh, the process through in terms of our workflow. Um, again, I just mentioned, please don't have every server or busser do that. We just need your GM or other appropriate manager at this time to let us know they completed. Um, send us an email again to verify and I'm safe certified and Carol has it up on the screen and you can see uh, it's in the COVID FAQ. Uh, and again, when you send that verification email, let us know your name, your title, your business and the email you registered under so we can find you quickly, add you to the list to be processed. Um, everyone that has emailed us, I believe we caught up yesterday. Um, so we're again working through the, the list again now. Um, but it just makes it easier and it'll be quicker and more efficient to get your certificate if you let us know. Fabulous. Uh, now I have a question. Um, yep, yep. Why should I submit to your online directory? So I think that that's the quickest way to let your customers know. Um, I know a lot of folks have already reached out to us, say customers are starting to inquire about the certification if the business, the restaurant has completed that. It's the easiest way to let customers know and the general public know that you've already completed this uh, and, and, and you're ready for, for business. And they have uh, put out some advertising and marketing on this. So customers are looking to see what businesses are safe certified. And so I think it's, that's really important. We want them to know all the restaurants. And I, earlier this week, you told me about 3000 restaurants had signed up and to me, you know, I mean, there's 3,500 restaurants in the state. I think that's a good saturation level. Um, we may have lost 500 restaurants by now, um, but you know, there's probably more than that. So I just, I wanted to mention that. Jason, go ahead. Yeah, and, and just on that, uh, you know, take advantage of it in the business toolkit. There is a link 
Um, originally, when we launched this program uh, in partnership with New Mexico, New Mexico Magazine, uh, to your point, Carol, they were highlighting and promoting the businesses that were certified, as well as offering a uh, up to $2,000 digital advertising credit with New Mexico Magazine. So uh, while you're uh, required to do this, might as well take advantage of the marketing benefit on the other side. Absolutely. <clears throat> so uh, Dion, do we have any questions of Jason? I, did I actually you. have one from Facebook. Okay. The food pro, or I'm sorry, the program says food employees can dry their hands with cloths, which is in direct violation of state city county, county food regulations. The program also says to use sanitizer instead of hand washing in between glove usage, both of which are also in violation of state city county food regulations. How are we to reconcile the information we have from the state with the information we are required from previous food regulations? That is an absolutely good question. Uh, my only comment I can make on that, because I know which video you're talking about, it's in the all employer training uh, videos. Um, all those videos and the narration and content was run by the New Mexico Department of Health with, who approved those videos. Um, so I, I can't, again, give anything other than answering that. Those, those, those are the directions from the Department of Health. So I would say um, that it's really important that we follow the environment department's rules that we all know and uh, for food safety. Um, and, and we know that hand washing is, is better than sanitizer. Again, that was for retail and other employers, not necessarily for uh, restaurant employers and employees. So let's stick with the New Mexico Environment Department. We all know those rules. And um, I, I think that's the safest thing. Does anybody have anything to add to that? No, I'm just gonna add on, I think Carol, that's a great point because the all together or the all employer modules are where those are described. Those are for across every single industry here in the state. And so if there are, I, just, just echoing you, if there are specific requirements within the environment department for food handling and food safety, follow those. Uh, again, these are these were general ones developed by the state that, that we're just um, helping educate folks about, but if there's more specific ones, I'd go with those. The follow-up to that is, is it possible to have an official disclaimer put in um, for restaurants? Uh, I, I, I mean, I think that's something uh, that can be asked to the, the Economic Recovery Council and the All Together New Mexico document, because all we're doing is, is taking that um, content and putting it in video content. So um, I, I would ask for the disclaimer from, from that document as well. Jason, one other question from the chat. Is there two email addresses then? There's one for verification and one for other questions? Correct. So the nmsafecertified at gmail.com, uh, that, that'll be for basically general questions. And then, um, or if you have not received your login credentials. Um, and then for verifications, once you've completed the course and you just want to let us know, which we please let us know you have finished all the training modules, please do email at verifynmsafecertified at gmail.com. So again, those are- One more time. Those are both on our Frequently Asked Questions page, which is under COVID-19 FAQs. The verify and the nmcertified at gmail.com. Got it. Thank you for typing that in, Deanna. Um, so those are all, that's all going into the chat. Are there any more questions on the certification? Okay, because I'm going to let Jason, <clears throat> Jason go, but Jason, if you can stick around, um, that would be great. Um, yeah. Because we never know, we never know what's going to come up with the rest of this. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'll certainly, I'll certainly stick around. And then just my last thing, just that. <laughs> 
if you don't hear from us or you, if you have a question or you're concerned about you didn't receive anything, reach out to us and please reach out to us as early as possible because um, what I am expecting is, is a rush on Friday. So if you haven't received something from us now, email us, let us know so that we can do it now. Jason, before Jason. you leave, um, one question from the chat. If you have multiple locations, you do need certification per location or is one enough? Um, ideally, it would be one person at uh, each location, uh, but depending on your structure, uh, if, if you if your structure, um, you know, we're relying on businesses, you guys run your businesses, you know how you operate, you know how you do your operations. So if you have someone that's specific to your operations and your COVID safe practices, um, and that's the appropriate person to do it for two locations, that's fine with us. Just, you know, your business structure the best. All right. Thank you so much, Jason, for being here. And I just have to tell you guys, he's doing yeoman's work. He didn't expect to have to um, get 3,000 people certified in 10 days. And yeah, great job, Jason. Thank you for doing that. Um, because we want to stay open. <laughs> so it's really important. Um, going back to our agenda. Um, now we're going to answer um, your questions as well as some of the questions that have already come in to us about the recent public health order, the contact tracing, customer screening, spot checking, and closing. So let's take this one at a time, contact tracing. What does it mean? What do you have to do? And I found some interesting language in the Alternate Together New Mexico document. I'm gonna show you how to get to all of this from our website, because I know, you know, sometimes you guys, you're somewhere at home during the evening and you don't know how to get to things. Um, and really, we, we try to keep all of these resources here for you. So if you go to the COVID safe practices, um, and we have put in quite a few things today that are new. One thing that's here is this all together document from the state, and we have linked it to their link. So anytime they have a change, it's going to change, hopefully, <laughs> that hopefully that's the way it's going to do. Um, if you have a COVID positive employee, these are your resources here. We just got some new ones, some facts, uh, FAQs from the, um, I think it was the environment department on NMED, environment department again, compliance checklist, OSHA questions, what to do, and this is from the CDC. Um, so lots of interesting things in here. Testing resources, many of you have, have used our uh, testing program that um, we talked to months ago and you've been very happy with uh, what the, the, the group, that testing group does for us. Uh, let's see. So there's a log on here, um, contact, so customer contact tracing log. Now, before I get there, I'm going to go to this all together in New Mexico and get to, I think it's page 14. And actually, I'm going to start here at page 13 because here's what this says to support contact tracing, provide all customers who visit the establishment the opportunity to record their name. Remember, this says the opportunity to record their name and phone number or email address along with the date and time of their visit and retain such records for no less than four weeks from the date of collection. This is from the latest COVID safe practices. Um, the public health order. So I took this directly from the public health order and what it says about, um, and we're going to do the, Diane, uh, sorry. So this is about the screening of customers and staff. That's different than the contact tracing. We'll go over that. It is, it is quite different. Um, 
but this is where it says that you have to comply with the uh, contact tracing. And honestly, somebody tell me what number it is, if you see it. These are not my reading glasses. Nine. Thank you. Uh, customers pro provide limited information for contact tracing, uh, retaining contact tracing information for no less than three weeks. So this is what you have to do. Um, are there Carol, questions? Can I, can I jump in real quick? Please. Just one, one thing to know, I mean, and this is what becomes confusing about all this. If you go down to under additional requirements for indoor dining, the second bullet, there is another contact tracing requirement. So maintain if you're doing indoor dining, you're if you do indoor dining, you're required to maintain contact tracing records for no less than 21 days by recording the date, time, names, phone numbers, and emails of all customers who dine on the premise indoor and outdoor. And then there's also the other one, which is just if you just do outdoor, then you have to offer it and you have to keep it up for four weeks. It's a little confusing. Yes, in fact, this is Amelia Nelson. I was going to mention that with the new public health order in effect, it's a must for indoor dining. And it doesn't actually differentiate between the two. It says that you must have the names and contact information of all diners and maintain them for three weeks, 21 days, as Jason stated. So, Amelia, where are you getting that information? That's from the amended public health order, uh, October 23rd, and it's from the specific segment regarding um, food and drink establishments. It talks about them um, completing that New Mexico Safe Certification Training Program, but then further down, it, it discusses what will happen, one, if you do or don't obtain it. One is if you do by Friday, October 30th, you can maintain an indoor dining maximum of 30, sorry, 25% capacity. And if you don't, then are, if the restaurant is not New Mexico State certified, they continue outdoor dining and service at 75% maximum with the six feet table separation. But then anyone who wants to provide indoor dining service who is eligible has to, one, give consent for spot testing of their employees by the Department of Health, and two, must require customers who dine on site, so actually it's indoor or outdoor based upon my reading, um, to list their name and contact information in a logbook and retain the information for no less than three weeks. And so, this is in the amended October 23rd summary of the public health order on the in New Mexico.gov webpage. And what page is that of the amended health order? Well, I'm looking, what I just read page from six. is yeah, it's on page six of the health order. And I'm also reading the October 23rd, 2020 amended pel public health order in effect statement on the web page. It's the latest updates. Sorry. Okay, so this is the amended, this is the amended health order yes. here. And that is not stated here. And that's where I think maybe Jason was mentioning the confusion, and that's what I wanted to point out, is on the same web page, the um, updates refers to a must and three weeks, whereas the order itself and what you're referring to is a may and four weeks. And I think that's a, obviously it's a very significant difference and something that has to be addressed and figured out. So just for people's... Um knowledge. We have two people on here uh, from the uh, Governor's Economic Recovery Council that are aware that we have these differing opinions and, um, and confusing and conflicting opinions. And, you know, I don't know what restaurateurs are supposed to do, but we're going to help you get through this. And you're going to do the best you can. And if somebody comes into your restaurant and says you're not doing it right, Tell them to point you in a direction and you can point them in another direction. And that's really why we're here is to make sure that you understand there's a lot of different places you can get this information and it's all different and it's all from the state. So to me, I think we, we should be looking at the public health order and that is on our website. 
And Carol, this is right Allison. If I if I may jump in here just a second, uh, we also did receive some answers to some of these questions from the governor's office. And on that point of um, the contact tracing, the um, is it outdoor diners as well as indoor diners? If you're from the question, the answers we've received from governor's staff, uh, it basically says if you are allowing indoor dining, then yes, indoor and outdoor diners need to be traced, need to do the contact tracing. So, and here's the thing is I want you all to calm down just a little bit because we have, we have some things that we can do um, for this contact tracing and um, for the screening that I think, I think will help you run your business and not have it this overly burdensome regulation hurt your business. So, so everybody calm down because <laughs> I know there's, there's a lot of angst about this. Um, and then if anybody from the uh, Economic Recovery Council would like to talk to us about, you know, what parts of this do we, yeah, Alan, I'd love to hear from you. This is Alan Effelt. Is that how you spell, uh, pronounce your last name? Yeah, hi everyone, thanks Carol. Um, Carrie Phyllis and I are both on the Recovery Council and we're very well aware of these issues. I sent a long uh, letter uh, which has been distributed to the entire Recovery Council raising many of these questions um, and asking that the public health order be immediately amended to clarify this. So uh, I can tell you there will be a meeting uh, today at 3.30 by the COVID Safe Practices Subcommittee of the Recovery Council where this will be discussed. And the entire Recovery Council is meeting tomorrow afternoon where this will also be discussed. So I, I, I understand it's confusing. Um, and I think it's just that the governor's office is trying to move as quickly as possible to contain what is obviously a very serious spike. Um, but I wouldn't worry overly about it because I, I believe that there will be some clarification and amendments coming out relatively quickly. And we'll know a lot more by end of day tomorrow. And uh, if, if you'd like, I can be directly back in touch with Carol who can share that information with you. I would appreciate that. Um, there's a question here. What if a customer refuses to sign the contact tracing log? Are we to refuse service? And it says the best practice is to refuse service, but um, I'm coming to you as your advocate, and this came from the governor's office. Um, I, I don't think you have the ability to re refuse service to anybody right now. I mean, if, if I know the restaurant industry right now, we're desperate for anybody to serve. And so I don't think, um, although we did take this from the governor's office, you know what? Uh, figure it out, try to get something from them so that you can contact them at a later date. But I just, um, this kind of stuff is way over the top and I don't think we should be subject to that. There's no other industry in the state that's being subject to this, even though there are other industries that um, look like they have more COVID positive employees than our industry does. So, um, one thing I'll mention, Carol, is that something that has been coming up on social and in chat is that uh, some people have been suggesting that if you offer the contact tracing when you offer the bill, then there is no service to refuse if they refuse to give you the information um, because you've already terminated your <laughs> their, their dining experience. So that is something that has also come up um, is that some people have just said, you know what, we're giving them the opportunity to give us that information with their bill. And if they choose not to do it, well, they're leaving anyway, so. Yeah, so, you know, um, absolutely. I think that as a matter of fact, when we first started talking about CSPs a long time ago, prior to anything coming out from the state, uh, we talked about contact tracing and some people said they were gonna leave a log at the front door and people who wanted to could sign in. Um, and other ones said, I'm just going to give, uh, you know, the questions with the bill. And so that has come up a lot and, and very interesting, creative way to deal with that. 
Um, and, and, you know, I do think, I do think most people are going to be fine with it. And I've been on the radio a ton in the last week, mostly in Albuquerque. I'd be happy to be on the radio anywhere you guys are from, but talking about um, how this is not our rule. Please don't take it out on the server. Don't take it out on the person asking for this. This is the governor's rule. And if, you know, just give them the information because it's something we have to have in order to have dine-in customers. And um, I think most people understand that. I know there's going to be some that just refuse. And uh, obviously we have some ideas here. Um, so is there anything else on contact tracing? Dion, anything in the chat that we need to that we have not answered that we can answer yes um one of them is does it have to be every single person or one per party and i believe that's addressed on the faqs but if we could cover that verbally yes from what i understand it is um every single person but again you know if if there's somebody in the party they know who the other people are so so what makes sense again this is the this is more of the why or what if, and not the what, but to me, it makes sense that you would get at least one person, they can contact the other people that are in their party. But then again, the state said, get every single person, so. And we've received a few questions regarding um, whether or not it has to be a log book. If I could provide just some feedback from um, Trombinos called me the other day with this question. They are actually collecting just index cards type sized um, from everyone and they put them in a box, a sealed box, like a suggestion box. The customers seem to like that because there's their phone number isn't out and about for everyone to see. And then he's just gathering those at the end of the day and putting them in a big envelope and keeping them for three weeks or four weeks, whatever it turns out to be. Um, so we've been talking about that in chat, but those of you who aren't following the chat just wanted to reach out that that's okay. And I think we want to cover the health screening questions, but I believe that's going to be covered next. I don't yeah, have anything so, else on contact tracing. Okay, so customer screening. Um, this was not in the public health order. It was, uh, or uh, excuse me, yeah. Um, it was looks like it was kind of an afterthought, but it was a big afterthought. Um, and this is it. So these are 17 questions that you have to ask your customers before they can come in onto your premises. Um, and here's the deal with that is, I know a, a restaurant here in Albuquerque, he put together a poster with all of this on it and it's uh, six foot tall at least. And it basically says, if you have any of these things, do not enter this premises. So what we did was we put together a poster for you all to download. And again, I'm gonna tell you that we don't know if this, is, if, if this suffices, but I don't think any restaurant or any hostess should have to ask a person if they have, if they currently have diarrhea or vomiting. I just, you know, that is, that will make anybody lose their appetite. So um, this is a poster that says, if you answer yes to any of these questions, you are permitted entrance into this building. If you answer no, welcome and enjoy your meal. You're not permitted entrance into the building. And so it, it goes through all of the questions um, have you traveled to another state? Have any members of your household traveled to another state? Have you had close contact with, without the use of appropriate PPE with someone who is currently sick? If you answered yes, again, you are not permitted to entrance. If you answered no to every question, welcome and enjoy your meal. Sorry, these are not our rules. Thank you for <clears throat> understanding in advance. So um, I don't, I don't necessarily want Carrie and Ellen to ask the governor if that's okay. We have talked to our general counsel. Council said that that should suffice for the screening questions. And um, we're gonna go with that. Um, I, I think anything else is, it should not. Carol, if, if, 
sorry. If we don't bring this up, you still would like us though to, because Alan and I were not part of any conversation that included this. Yeah. And so I, I think know. Alan and I both have a lot of questions regarding it. So without bringing up the poster, we are going to inquire more about this because um, I agree with you. I would never want to subject my staff to it. And I just, it's a very difficult place to put <clears throat> a server in. We've had enough issues with servers getting yelled at about masks, let alone asking um, someone about their bodily functions. Right. Go ahead, Alan. Hey, Carol, this, this is on the agenda for this afternoon and for tomorrow to discuss this specific point with the recommendation that this not be part of the public health order. So I'm actually optimistic that rather than trying to skirt around the issue that that Carrie and I at least could address this directly with the ERC and the ERC, I, I'm pretty positive would make a recommendation that substituting this document with the current requirement for frontline screening would be acceptable. And I really think that's a good tactical approach. I, I don't think it really helps the restaurant association or businesses in general to try to find what are obvious workarounds to the public health order. It seems like trying, trying not to comply as opposed to instead addressing the issue forthrightly and directly and saying, this won't work for these reasons. And only if you can't get what seems to be a reasonable solution, that's the only time I would try to go around the rules. Uh, Carol, well, you know what, we're trying to, to figure that. out what the rules are. So go ahead, Jason. No, I was just going to say, and just um, just on that point too, you know, from a, a restaurant employee sort of, you know, it's the restaurant's goal to, to mitigate and, de and um, decrease any exposure on behalf of their employees. And so to me, I mean, not knowing the answer and, and Alan and, and the RCL look into it, but, you know, it's the restaurant's goal to decrease and mitigate any exposure and putting an employee at the front door to interact with every single customer coming in and asking him these questions would seem to me that it would increase exposure, which is the exact opposite we want. So hopefully um, that change can be made. And um, I am remember that the people that are that, that did this without Alan and I having input on it, they don't understand the process of a restaurant. And so I, I think that there is a very um, literal way to look at things and then there's a practical way of running a restaurant. And so um, I, I do think that it is something that needs to be addressed because it does not make any sense at all. Thanks, Jen. I appreciate that. Um, we have somebody with their hand up, um, Robert Vick. Hi, Carol. This is Robert. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I okay. can. Well, I was just actually, by waiting and listening to you, you pretty much answered my question, but I was going to, I was going to say that we we're having issues where people don't want to give all the information that's on the log and we're doing it, but we're, what we've been doing is getting one person's name and phone number. And then a lot of them won't give us their email. Um, some, some of our customers are so they're a lot older and they don't even have emails. Um, they're like, well, just Facebook me. You know, that kind of stuff is what they're trying to tell us to do. But um, uh, so we're, we're doing as much as we can, um, but are, are we gonna get in trouble for not getting their last name? And uh, sometimes it's just our first name or sometimes it's their last name they wanna give us. And we do it like like as if you're taking a reservation and we try to explain to them, it's only for, for for getting you sat down and, and, and if there's a problem, yes, this, the state may call you to find out for contract tracing that let you know that somebody may have had it or you may have been in the vicinity of someone that has it. And it's only for your safety. And some people are like, okay, I understand. But some people are just really outright. I don't want the government to have my information. And I try to explain to them, hey, the government already has your information. What are you talking about? But they, they we just fight with them all the time. Some of them are just really got their heels down in the mud and they don't want to give that information. Um, but we're trying to do everything we can to keep people happy. So yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering, are we gonna get in trouble? 
for that, not having that all that is the dilemma and i have to tell you uh robert owns fix vittles on central here in albuquerque and he's doing some really amazing things with this he has an ipad as you come into his restaurant that um, as you get close to it, it takes your temperature and it can tell if you're wearing a mask or not. And it will, the iPad will actually tell you, you can't come in because you're not wearing a mask. I tried it, I know. Um, not that I was going in without a mask, but I wanted to see what it told me. Um, very interesting stuff that he's doing. He's also the one with the six foot tall poster um, that he has posted outside of his building. So he's doing, you know, a bunch of stuff to try to make this work um, and and Alan and Carrie, if you're going to take this message to the governor at some point, please, you know, um, I think it would be hard enough at a retail place to do this, you know, Sam's or or Costco, but at a restaurant, um, it's just really, really difficult, and people have dug in their heels. So. Um, if you can, you know, help us with that, it would be amazing. So that's because ask. I mean, my Ooh. my opinion is, if you're doing the best you can, then you're you're doing it. So I I think that that's that's cutting a really fine line to to try to you know come after you because you didn't get somebody's last name. But mm -hmm. I will definitely bring it up, and I know Alan and I will absolutely advocate um, for for some understanding. All right, um, before we move on, we have a couple of questions, but I'm gonna save those sure. until the end because I really want to get to I really want to get to the end of this um, and then start answering some questions of folks. Carol. Yeah, Fernando. Thank you. I, I really would like to make a comment at this point. Uh, you know what I what I did, I have a poster with all the questions. We make some posters that have, we have all the questions and we just ask. We just asked the, our guest, uh, I say, would you please tell me if you, you, some of this apply to you? All that they say is no. I have one that say, I have COVID six months ago. What we gonna do if they have a COVID six months ago? We refuse service to them? Well, it doesn't address that, but I would think they would have immunity, so. You know, that's what they say. That's what I they know. say. But, but like I said, they don't, they don't give us that information. Right. You know, they don't tell us what to do. You know what? All that we do is we are obey the, the mandates of the governor and we need to do this. We need to check your temperature. Uh, it's some people that get upset, but if they don't let me check their temperature, we don't let them come in. I really don't care. So uh, everybody that we have in my restaurant, 99% is reservations on open table. And, and we have the information, but even though we have the information, we still ask the information. We've been doing that since day one of COVID. And uh, uh, now after the mandate, we ask the information of each of the people in the party that it really don't make any sense. If we could have contacted just one person, that, that I think that that would be enough, you know? So, so that's what I, okay. Um, so I want to move on because we don't have that much more time. Um, and we may go past the hour just because I know you guys have questions and I don't want to ignore anybody. I just want to make sure that that we get through this um, for those of you who are sticking around. So um, that's customer screening, spot checking, uh, consenting to the Department of Health for spot testing of symptomatic employees. So. This changed, you know, like five different times last week from when the governor made the at her briefing on Tuesday to what happened on uh, Friday. So at first, this was spot checking your employees like they could come in and just spot check your employees randomly. Um, and then it became spot spot testing of symptomatic employees and I have made the argument to a couple of folks, including Carrie and Allen um, and uh, the governor's office that we're not allowed to let our employees on our premise if they're symptomatic. So this isn't, can't really be a rule. Like there's not gonna be any symptomatic employees on our premise. And I don't know where this comes from. If Allen or 
carry know anything about where this comes from or what problems pe the government was having in order to make this part of the order you know this is one of those whys that i don't know why but it shouldn't be a problem for anybody because it's symptomatic employees and you're not letting those on your premise alan do you have any thoughts yeah it doesn't seem um, problematic to me i know that the governor is primarily listening to her medical advisory team and the medical advisory team is more cautious than the recovery council i think that's just the nature of things I would pick my battles really carefully here. I, I, I wouldn't be worried about Department of Health spot testing because they probably have the right to do that anyway if they think there's an issue. I'd be really focused on making sure that um, the restaurant industry was not hampered by excessive regulations in occupancy percentages or screening for customers. I mean, those are those are battles that I think could be fought and won if they're approached in a cooperative and rational way, in a really forthright way. And that's my strong advice. And that I know is what Carrie and I are going to be doing because we both are restaurant and bar owners. No, I, de I definitely appreciate that. And any help you can you need from us, I think it's helpful for you to hear uh, from these folks about what's what's got them nervous and uh, worried about these regulations. So um, closing at 10, this does mean close at 10. It means you cannot um, allow anybody else on your premise and you must have lights out at 10 o'clock. Carrie, Alan, do you know anything different about that? Um, no, I mean, treat 10 p.m. as you would have treated 2 a.m. Everyone needs to be out um, and, and yeah, just completely closed down. So an earlier, obviously, um, last call. I saw a question about if you could do, still do takeout or delivery. Um, and I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, Alan and I can try to get the answer, but delivery maybe, but probably not takeout. You wouldn't want to put yourself in a position that you're allowing people inside your establishment. So the public health order actually says you may provide carry out service or delivery service if otherwise permitted by law. Um, any food or drink establishment that is permitted to serve alcohol must close by 10, close for in-person service by 10, and must remain closed until 4 a.m. Food and drink establishments may provide delivery service after 10, but no customers are permitted on the premise. So you can do the delivery with the delivery service, but you can't do takeout with customers. That's the way I would interpret that as well. The, the real objective here for the public health order is to prevent gatherings without social distancing or masks. And that's, that's the real issue of the 10 o'clock closure. Okay. Um, so, Carol, Carol so, yes. so how, how many people can be seated on a table? Because that, I listen one thing, I listen another thing. The way that the mandate reads is uh, uh, five, and, and you guys sent and said six people on a table. So which one is the, the one? It's six. Six people at a table, and I've read that multiple times. It's possibly in here, but it's certainly um, in the COVID safe practices. It's six people at a table, but only five people for a large gathering. I don't know why the difference. We looked this up almost immediately when this came out because we weren't sure if it was gonna go back to five people or if it was going to be remain at six and it has remained at six. Um, Carol, I think I can shed, this is Alice, and I may yeah. shed, be able to shed a little bit of light on that if you look at, at, the, at the definition of mass gatherings. So mass gatherings not going to include, you know, member, people who, who reside together. So if you have six people who reside together dining, uh, you should probably, that's probably fine to have six people, but yes, five is the mass gathering um, number. So that's, that's probably why there's just that difference between five and six. 
Um, but, um, you know, to be on the safe side, um, the on the restaurant side, it does say no more than six people at a table. Yeah. Okay, so and, we've answered that. Now I want to move on because I do have a, a woman here who called me last Friday and she said, I think I have a solution for you. And this is uh, Becca Burt from DrOwl.com. And um, I'll tell you my story after Becca does a little bit of song and dance. If you guys want to know more about this app, we can we can talk about it and we can do a separate um, call or webinar. But I want to I just want you to introduce you to, to Becca and have her talk to you about this real quick. So go ahead, Becca. Thank you so much, Carol. And do you mind if I share my screen? No, that's good. Okay. Oh, I don't know if you can. Yeah, I can't yet, but I'll talk while you do that. Okay. So well, hello, you. everyone. Thank you so much for um, allowing me to speak today. So I work for Dr. Al. We're actually a local New Mexico um, Albuquerque based tech company. And we have a free, like absolutely free, no cost. You're never gonna have to input any kind of information. Um, a solution for you to be able to do screening and monitoring for your businesses, for your staff, and for your visitors. So I'm going to give you a very, very fast um, show of what that looks like. And um, I do want to offer this out to absolutely everybody on this call, to every New Mexico restaurant, because we do know, you know, money is tight. And it, this, is, this is a difficult space to be in. So we want to make this process as easy and efficient for you as possible. Um, so what this will allow you to do is you can screen and you could actually even have two accounts for each of your locations where you have the staff screening into one and maybe have some more, um, some different questions and you're asking your visitors. But for your visitors, you would get a QR code that you could put outside of your building. This would allow folks to go ahead and screen themselves into your um, restaurant. Um, and actually, if all of you, if you have your phones and you can see my screen, you actually can go ahead and pull out your phone right now. I know most of you use QRs in your um, restaurant. So go ahead and like, you know, use the QR reader on my screen right now and see what that would look like on your phone. So this is actually the example I'm showing you is actually um, very much reliant or we, we use our default questions based off the CDC recommendations. So I think this is pretty similar to what you might be doing um, already, but you have complete control of, of updating and customizing your questions. And um, you, have, you, you can get email notifications when someone gets denied. And then all of that information is being digitally logged for you in a visitor log that's gonna be easily exportable. So it's gonna give you a timestamp of when the person did that, um, they, when they did their screening it's gonna tell you how they responded to the questions. And you could always, if the Department of Health calls and says they need to get a contact tracing log from you, you're gonna be able to go to a custom range, select it, apply it and export it, and it's done. It's completely ready to go um, and easily accessible for you. So there is a companion app that staff who are coming in every single day, you as owners, you as managers, if you're coming in every day, we actually have an app that's available as well. So it'll save your information. You can just easily check in from the app. Otherwise, it would be the QR code. And then, like I said, your staff and visitors can use this to screen themselves. So this is what the web form would look like. This will also populate, obviously, on the phone. Um, they would just be able to put in that first name, last name, phone number, email that's required. And then these questions, like I said, are completely customizable. So here is where I know I heard some, you know, some concerns about having to ask, ask about bodily functions in here. In this, you know, obviously people are doing this hopefully from outside the building before they even enter. And they could just say yes or no. They don't have to tell you if they're having diarrhea in particular, but they can tell you, yes, I am having a symptom. And then you can make your, de your best practice decisions from there. So all of these, um, we do have the ability, you also can log temperatures if you'd like to. You could have the guests log them or you could log them in administratively. Um, and it's, it's very simple. We are offering, like I said, this is completely free for every New Mexico restaurant. We really care about the health and safety and about your business. And so we wanna help you protect your employees and asking them these screening questions. But also if you need to, you, you know, now that you need to keep a contact tracing log, you can actually create this very easily easily digitally and this is all HIPAA compliant. Our whole platform is HIPAA compliant. 
So it is secure and encrypted. Um, so very, I, I wanted to do a very quick little intro. And like Carol said, I'm, I'm super available and easily to access. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the website and my email in the chat. So if you go to this website, you could actually create your account today and start using this tomorrow. It's very easy to create an account and have it listed. Um, and then this is my personal, this is my direct email address. So if you want to send me an email, if you want, if you have multiple locations across the state and you want some additional help from us, we can help you get started, help you um, arrange them all for you and get you going. Um, but reach out to me. I'm located here in Rio Rancho. I'm, we're, we're all New Mexicans that are working on this platform for you. And it is being used by thousands of places across the country right now. So we're super happy. I, I'm thrilled to be talking to my fellow New Mexicans right now about this. So um, we definitely want to, we know this is a hard time for you all. We want to make it as easy as possible. And like I said, free. So if you hate it, try it out. If you hate it, you don't have to use it. But um, we do think it's a really easy, simple way for you to be able to try to meet some of these requirements um, and not make it burdensome on your guests or on your staff or yourself, especially. So. Yeah, that's it, Carol. I'll, I'll, if you want to have anyone answer, if you want me to be here to answer questions, but otherwise, you know, please reach out to me or um, I'm happy to work with you, Carol, on um, on setting up a follow up. Sure. Um, so here's the interesting thing is that I walked into Monroe's downtown uh, this Sunday and I had just talked to Becca on Friday and um, I talked to Matt at Monroe's and he said, he said, this is what we're doing. He said, this, this DrOwl.com um, actually is being used at the school where his daughter goes to school. And he said, he just picked it up off the website and started using it for his restaurant. So it can be that easy. You know, you've got a QR code, they answer the questions um, and they give you their contact information. He's got a, a QR code sitting with a, a printed log so that they can do it however they are more comfortable. Here's the printed log, here's the QR code. Um, however you're most comfortable doing this, you know, uh, please get us the information. He's doing it on a volunteer basis. I, you know, it's from the uh, public health order, it's not volunteer anymore. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna say, it's not up to us. It's not our rule. It's somebody else's rule and we need to mm. follow it. Um, so I just, I wanted to make sure that you guys had that app possibility. And, and the other thing that I want to say about this is there is a way, so you can put your own questions in. And I think one of the first questions is, do you mind if we use your email address to send you discounts and other, you know, programs, you know, because here's the thing, for those of you who don't have your own email address list to send your customers things, I think you need it. Um, and if this can be a way to capture some of that, you know, obviously you're going to want to get rid of the uh, screening, but actually they don't, the, the screening doesn't remain in the database. Is that correct, Becca? So the... I no, so it actually does. So all of the information is stored. We don't delete any information. I know it has like a 21 day for you to hold on to, you know, your paper records. I could see you wanting to get, try to move through those. We actually hold on to this information forever for you. So if six months down the road, you have some kind of legal liability come show up um, and you need to be able to provide records from six months ago, we would have that here for you. So we do not delete any information. We do keep it stored securely and encrypted. And yeah, like Carol said, um, a lot of, we have um, agreements with the PED as well as NMAA and even um, the health services department um, is starting to use Dr. Al. So we have a lot of the state agencies that are actually using um, Dr. Al. So you'll see kids and, and families using this more as people start coming back into schools as well. So there is a question, and I know you showed this to me, is how do we know if the customer did it or not when they come in? Great question. So I'm gonna click on this visitor info and I'll easily be able to see, so I can actually see a couple of you went ahead and did scan that QR code for me. So thanks for that. So I can actually see, you know, I can see that Michelle um, just did it. It does have the timestamp there for me. 
so I can see exactly when people did screen themselves. Um, for your staff, you can actually upload a roster of your staff and see who on your staff did not screen themselves on any particular day. So it can alert, um, you can see that very easily. Um, and then you would be able to see how people responded. So you can see here to my entry, I put that I was employee. I did respond to no to all of the questions. Um, but if someone does say, you know, have a no entry, I can see why they had a, a that this person said, yes, they are waiting on a, on a COVID-19 test. So I would be able to see why people are not um, allowed in, but overall our main screen, and that does come up on the export sheet as well. So you can easily, and like, like Carol said, if you can add an extra question on the bottom, asking to use emails, this is gonna be, you're gonna be able to export this onto an Excel sheet, grab those emails in 10 seconds. So really easy way for you to collect emails from your um, guests when they're, when they're okay with that. So the other thing is it comes up on your phone. It says entry allowed. Is that correct? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yes. On the phone. Yeah. So Simple that's the easiest is. way for sure. <laughs> sorry, Carol. Yeah. The that's easy okay. way to do it. So yeah. on, on the phone, it's going to have a really big green entry allowed message um, when they fill out the, the QR code. Um, and then it's going to be really big red that says, you know, please do not enter. And then you can customize what you would like people to do should they answer yes to any of those questions. So maybe you say, please call the front or please call the front um, hostess stand. Please, please talk to the hostess, you know, whatever procedure you have for your restaurant that you want to talk to your customer, even though you may not be able to serve them that day, maybe you want to talk to them about takeout instead. Um, so that that is available and they're easily going to be able to show you from their phone that they completed the screener. Great, thank you so much. Um, so I'm gonna stop your share if I can. Carol, and, yeah, this is Allison. Um, a question that I've that um, was sent to me is, is something I would like to bring up before uh, we quit. Um, be, before Alan and Carrie have their meeting this afternoon, and it's on the topic of healthcare personnel um, routinely being. Um, around positive cases. So would that mean that healthcare personnel would not be able to come into our restaurants? So that might be something uh, for Carrie and Alan to uh, ponder um, in their meetings. I'll absolutely ask that today and tomorrow. <clears throat> there was something in one of these, um, that said, oh, never mind. Um, that that said that that was not the case. Mm. I'll see if I can find it before we go. Um, so I would like to know, Minerva. I'm so sorry. You have had your hand up this whole time. Do you still have a question? Oh, Carol. No. I just wanted to comment when we were talking about contact tracing that I've been to doctor's offices and pharmacies and things like that, and they have a very short list of questions. Now, I don't know if, if this is prior to the very latest amendments to the public health order, but the, the questions is maybe six or seven questions. You know, they take my temperature and I'm ready to go. Um, as compared to 17 questions that restaurants are having to contend with. And I'm just curious if we're being held to the same standard as you know other businesses, or is there a big difference? Well, my answer is it's pretty obvious we're being held to a different standard because no, um, no other business has to ask these questions of their customers. Um, so it is a different standard. And again, there's the why. Um, it's because we're having a spike in cases. Alan, you have your... I, I think that's right, Carol. There is, a, there is a higher standard for restaurants and bars right now. And I think part of the argument that Carrie and I are trying to make is that um, although additional vigilance may be required, this proportion of vigilance is not a good business strategy. And so what we're gonna ask is that the entire public health order get reevaluated in light of risk profiles 
And if there's an industry like a restaurant that doesn't seem to be meeting those risk profiles, it shouldn't be penalized. Thank you, I appreciate that, Ellen. Um, so uh, let me go through some of the additional uh, people with their hand up. And, and Dion, if you see some really important questions in here, would you chime in as well? I'm gonna go to uh, Robert Vick. Robert, did you have an additional Hi, question? Carol. Yeah. Yes, it's about the contract uh, tracing with the employees. And you kind of went through it earlier, but we do not even allow our employees, if we find out that they have guests from out of town, that they're on a 14 day quarantine, they can't even come to work. If they leave town uh, for any, leave the state for any reason, they're on a 14 day quarantine. And, um, and or if they're around um, people, they have guests that come in, they go under quarantine also. Yeah. Um, we're really strict on that because we're also taking care of the people on the base too. Mm -hmm. But it's something that, that we check. Uh, they have the sniffle, they think it's allergies. We still make them go to the doctors and they have to say it's just allergies. And that's and, and unless the doctor gives us a, a release saying that that's what it is, they can't come to work. And they have the sniffles, they have a sore throat that they're starting to cough and they think it's allergies. It's one of the symptoms of COVID. So we make them do that. Now, if they have um, a known issue, it's a different story than something that for some reason they they have a cough because of a, a throat problem that they have, then, then we understand, but we have it documented and we know. But, um, but we're really, we're real strict about that. And I thought we all had to be strict like that since this all started and back in uh, March. And I think, so I, I'm just wondering if they're wanting to come in here to like what you had mentioned it before, if, if we have any of those things, why are they coming in there? No one's gonna have those symptoms if you come in, they shouldn't even be at work. They should shut us down if we have people with symptoms working. Yeah, well, that's why that one just didn't make sense. But again, let's not let's not focus on that because honestly that screening is, is the least of our problems right now. Um, yes, ma'am. So, and Robert, I know that you and I talked last time and, and you said how difficult it was to get employees and, and it is, and we know that, but I've also, many of you on the phone have had COVID positive employees and going through that process is such a pain that um, it's really important that we not allow those people on our premise. Um, right, and uh, so, currently right now, I'm actually, the dining facility shut down because I had one employee who had a toothache, The very, she, we, we had her go home. The next day, all of a sudden she said she started to feel like she had the flu. She went to the doctor, we wouldn't let her come back. And then five days later, she tested positive. And so we ended up shutting down because there was 14 people that were in, in contact with her in some way for more than 15 minutes. And so the com commander said we had to shut down the facility completely for 14 days wow. in case there's any chance. So, I mean, we're extremely strict there. I, I do the same thing at the restaurant. Yeah. Well, and I think everybody's doing that with their employees. And if you're not, I mean, we should be taking temperatures um, and making sure that before they come in, they're answering those COVID safe questions. Um, you, you know, Carol, you know, when you're talking about temp temperature, sorry to interrupt, the, mm -hmm. but you know, this, this supervisor, she did not show a temperature and she'd done her temperature three times that day and she did not show a temperature. She told me that she didn't start showing her temperature until four days later after she had the test. So, so yeah. just the temperature is not always the symptom. I mean, it's not going to always show up. So there could be people that come in. Sure. Um, now, I want to make sure, uh, Dion, is there any questions that we need to get to in the chat? Some are being answered as we go by Carrie and Alan, and so I really appreciate that. Um, we did get a really good, um, interesting comment from Kim that the poster that we did doesn't seem to list every symptom that is listed. Um, so I told her that we would look into that. Um, and we probably okay. need to do that quickly. Um, we'll look at it and make sure they're yeah, all there. Make sure that everything is included. Um, and there was some discussion as well about um, them wanting a mix, a digital file 
of all of your check-ins. Um, and so I don't know if Carrie wants to jump in on that, um, but it looks like they are accepting both paper and digital records at the check-ins. I haven't seen anything about it having to be digital, nor is it in writing anywhere. So at this point, um, I would just continue with whatever works the best for your business. Um, not every establishment in the state is going to have the ability to do digital. So um, I, I would just continue as you are. Okay, thanks. That's, that's about it that we have from the chat. Most of us, we answered each other. Okay, thank you guys. I think the only one that's still pseudo pending on Facebook is that they wanted a very clear answer on are people required to fill out a log if they are just coming in to pick up a to-go order? And the answer is in, and I don't remember if it was the, yes. the all together in New Mexico is yes. Yes. If they're coming on your premise, they have to do that. Oh, and then uh, the other, will you be addressing the new rule about four concurrent cases in two weeks, um, which could result in a restaurant closure for two weeks? Um, honestly, there hasn't been that many restaurants that have more than two cases. And so again, this is one of those things that I'm not gonna die on the sword for. Um, and, and honestly, once you get up to that fourth case, pretty much restaurants are closing down. And it may not be for the full 14 days, but it may be for a certain amount of time just because you don't have any employees then that can work because they're all uh, have been exposed at some time. And now you're waiting for their negative tests to come back, et cetera. So um, again, it's, it's not great, but it is what it is and we have to follow that. Um, and, and again, I think anytime we've got even two cases, I think people get very serious about um, what is needed in order to get back, back to zero. Um, and if that means I've got to shut down for a while, I do. And if it means we don't shut down, um, you know, the Department of Health will help you make that uh, determination. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I was just listening about the quarantine. You know, the quarantine is something that has been said so many times and, and, and nobody's controlling that. You know, people come and go as they wish. They can come for a weekend. And maybe not, in Albuquerque is not that important, but in Santa Fe, at least 80% of our business is tourist. And when you say a quarantine of 14 days, you know, we better tell us to close. You know, I'd be very happy they close me a month, you know, because what they are doing, they are making everything impossible. So, so just close all the restaurants because what we find out through all this, we've been, we've been targets. It's not, it's not any, any business, it's restaurants. We are the bad people. We are the people that is not doing what they should be doing. We are, you know, and that's not true. If somebody, some industry has been responsible with this COVID, it's be the We've been so doing I will, as much I will as we tell can. You, um, just from the governor's point of view, and this is, you know, this is how she's seeing it. We are the one business where you come in and take your mask off. She firmly believes that mask wearing is what keeps the COVID from spreading. And, and just to defend her, when you come in a restaurant, you take off your mask. And so she firmly believes that restaurants are a potential problem. Carol? And, yeah. Um, can, is it possible that you, am I, are you, are you hearing me? This I is civil. Yeah. Is it, is it possible um, that with the restaurants that yes, they are saying that we are the ones that are the culprits, but like on us, we had a positive case. That person hadn't been in the restaurant for a week, but just because they're employed by me, then they said we had all get screened. And so we, 48 of us had to get screened, but this person wasn't even in the restaurant for a week. So, I mean, we still get blamed for that, but that doesn't mean we were the positive ones. Do you know what I mean? No, I totally understand. I mean, I get it. I watched the data. I watched that. The workforce yeah, I, is 
restaurant people. So obviously you have a lot of employees. Everybody's got a lot of employees. So you don't know where they've been, but then we still get blamed that it's us that started it. I mean, these kids are doing whatever. They're 20 years old. They're going out to parties. They're still doing all their own regular. If you go to the bars or the things that are still open till 10, they're still hanging out there after work. So if you see them there, uh, yeah. I mean, you can't block all your staff from not going places. They're going to go wherever they want, regardless. Well, and um, and let me just tell you, I watch that rapid response data uh, very carefully. As a matter of fact, I get a, um, I've done an IPRO, which is a request for records. Yeah, and I'm getting, and I'm getting, I'm getting the information with the industries in it. And so when I'm looking at that, it's showing that for the most part, there's one employee in a restaurant that has this. And what does that tell us? If there's only one employee, that means they brought it from outside and they have not spread it within the restaurant. And even when they're spread in the restaurant, a lot of times that's from people partying outside of the restaurant together. So I just wanna say, I will defend you, you know, to the death on this, restaurants are not the problem. You can see, um, you know, just, you can see with our spike, you know, we're at 25% open and um, somehow we have one of the biggest spikes in the nation, including Michigan, who's at 50% open. Um, so, so it's not restaurants, we know that, um, but the, you know, people think they're looking at data and they're looking at a few um, studies out there that say because you take off your mask in a restaurant and because um, the air recirculates that you're just recirculating the virus. Maybe true, maybe not, but it hasn't been proved. There's no study out there that proves that. Anyway, so Carol, you said that other question that I had about the doctors, what about the staff that has healthcare people working that, that what are they supposed to do when their family member comes home and they said that they've been around someone COVID positive. So does that mean my employees need to go home too? Or what, how does that work? Cause I mean, eventually everybody has to go home at this point, right? Or how do we do that now? I have a, an employee that came in and says that he's been around somebody that was positive. Obviously it's the mom, she's a doctor. She works on the COVID floor. So what is he supposed to uh, leave work and anybody that worked with him has to leave or how do we do that? It says somewhere in here that if you um, are not wearing PPE and I've got to find it, I'm sorry. I read it this morning and all of a sudden I'm not sure. I actually asked this question today <clears throat> because of a different, so was the mom, the doctor positive or was the, the no. Doctor. The patient was positive, but the doctor has been sent home. They told her she needs to stay home 14 days in quarantine because this patient was positive and is very sick. Um, but what okay, is so I, son go home? Or? I, asked that ex I asked that exact question today um, because of, of actually a, a related family issue. And I was told by the uh, Department of Health that if the 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 person who's exposed to the positive, then yes, needs to quarantine. But the person who was in contact with the person exposed does not have to quarantine. Now, if the mom ends up testing positive, that becomes a different situation. But um, well, then you wait, because they, I, I- They didn't require them to get tested. The doctor's not required to get tested. The hospital does not make them get tested. Oh, then- isn't that, that crazy? One, I think that that's crazy. Yeah, I don't have an answer for that one. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I sent the employee home because I don't know if the mom is positive. How will I know? Because she's not going to get tested. The hospital did not require her to get tested. So I mean, who are you going to blame? She just she doesn't have to get tested. So I sent the employee home and just told him, "Well, stay home for 14 days." I guess you know. I don't know. So uh, some of these things are going to be answered and some of this information in here and honest to God, I read something that said if the person was wearing PPE at the time, then it didn't, then you didn't have to quarantine. So, um, or you didn't, the screening, the screening didn't have to be, uh, I don't know. Sorry, I've read a lot of things today. Anyway, there is the, uh, 
rapid response COVID watch list. I read this today. It may be in here. I don't know. Um, and again, the compliance checklist, OSHA questions, all of those have a little bit different information on them. Um, so apologies for not knowing that. If I find it, Sylvia, I will, I will get that information back to you. Um, so are there any other questions, Dion, from the chat? Are there any other questions, folks, um, that you need to get answered while we're here? And uh, again, apologies for not having all of the answers. We're, we're doing this on the fly just like you are, and, and there's, a lot of, there's a lot of differing information out there. So one thing I will tell you is I think it's super important that you use this all together in New Mexico. If you're following this and you're following the um, governor's uh, health order, the PHO, sorry, it's here somewhere, then, okay, so if you're following this for restaurants and you're following this, you shouldn't have any problem with an enforcement agency that comes in on your premise because honestly, they don't know what they're doing. This is all new for them too. And, and here's the thing, if you can go to one of these documents and say, no, this is what it says here. Where are you reading from? You will be okay. So again, there's, there's other places that have information, but if you're following the public health order and you're following the Altogether New Mexico um, for restaurants, retail, and all employers, right? You should be covered. And, you know, I'll, I'll defend you to the end of time if that's the case. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just hurting for you all because I know how difficult just being in business right now is. And then you add these requirements on top of it and it's insane. And I'm sorry um, you know, we're going to get through this. We will get through this together. So um, keep keeping on. And um, if you have questions, please never hesitate to email me at executive at nmrestaurants.org. And um, uh, you can always get to me at my phone number, which is 250-2911. And that's a 505 number. And we've also put two general question, uh, general question email in the chat and uh, reiterated the certification questions for nmsafecertified at gmail.com. Um, Carol, I don't know if you want to keep going with questions or you need to get going, but we do have a transcript of the chat as well. So if you didn't get answered, you can email us or we will attempt to get to you as well. Yeah. And don't forget to use, I mean, there's a lot of resources on our website and don't forget to use those resources. Again, there's the COVID safe practices, which is this page. It's got um, testing. If you have a COVID positive employee, I know, you know that's, that's a hard thing to go through and we're adding new information to this all the time. You can download the poster with the screening questions. And if we don't have one of the questions in there, we'll get it on there before um, tomorrow. And so you can download it tomorrow. The All Together New Mexico here, these are uh, resource documents, um, contact tracing log, uh, change of floor plan. This is back to the uh, liquor control. Um, so, so we're trying to keep it all in one place. We also have the frequently asked questions and uh, that's got a lot of this newer information on it. And remember some of that is from the governor's office. Um, and, and somebody asked, who are the enforcement agencies? It's going to be the environment department and Carrie, uh, tell me if I'm wrong on this. It's going to be the environment department the state police and the SIU agents. Is that correct? Um, yes, and I haven't heard any more about um, any of the, the other state agencies that they're, they're doing some training with. But as of now, that's still who it is. Department of Environment, um, SIU and state. Okay. 
Um, so thank you all for being here. I'm sorry it's under these circumstances. Thank you, Alan, Carrie, Allison, Becca, um, Jason, and uh, Amelia for answering questions for our, our members and, and just being here for us. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.